Kuzangpu, I am Pratima Rai and welcome to e-learning program. This lesson targets class 9 and 10 students and in this lesson we are going to discuss how to write an introductory paragraph for an exposed TVC. So with this we have objectives. By the end of this lesson you should be able to list the components of an introductory paragraph and also write an introductory paragraph for your exposed TVC. Now with this I have something for you. Dalton says if you do not write well, you must train yourself to become an articulate writer. Remember that writing is a skill, not a gift. The last line, writing is a skill, not a gift, is a good news for us. Because if writing is a skill and not a gift, then I see a lot of promises and opportunities here. Because with right effort and lots and lots of practices, I'm sure all of us can become a very good writer. So I hope this line encouraged you just the way it did to me. Now moving on, let's have a very brief revision on essay. I say revision because I know that uh, you have been writing essay for a very long period of time right from our primary classes. So the first question for you here is, what are the components of an essay? Your think time starts now. Right, your think time is up, so I hope you have answers similar to what I have here. Components of an essay, the first one is title, followed by introduction, and then three body paragraphs, and then the conclusion. So these are the components of an essay. Now, in order to call a piece of writing an essay, it must have these features in them. Title, introduction, body paragraph, and conclusion. Now, there's a word of caution here for you. When it comes to the number of body paragraphs will vary. So, as a student, as a beginner writer, you're encouraged to write three body paragraphs. One introductory paragraph, three body paragraphs, and a closure. But you will realize that as you step into colleges and universities that the number of body paragraphs will start to vary. It will no longer remain as three. It can go up to eight or twelve depending on the kind of assignment questions that you have received. Well, so next question for you is list down the elements of an expository essay. Your think time starts now. Okay, your time is up, and let's check our answers now. So these are the elements of an expository essay. So the first element says, explain or define a topic to provide information. An expository essay must either explain or define a topic to provide information. Some ways we're also talking about the purpose of an expository essay here. So what's the purpose of an expository essay? The purpose of an expository essay is to inform, whereas, if you may like, the purpose of a descriptive essay is to describe. So we have different types of essays, and uh, each type of essay has different purposes. The purpose of an expository essay is to inform, so you can either explain or define a topic when you start writing an expository essay. Now, how you provide and information and what type of information that you provide in an expository essay is also very important. Meaning that just providing information is not enough. You have to validate that information with very reliable, authentic, and credible examples and evidence. So this is the reason why the second element of an expository essay says it is best developed by the use of facts and statistical information. Or the other way of providing information is also through cause and effect relationships. For instance, if you have a claim in your expository essay saying that deforestation leads to uh, lots of landslides. So if you have that type of claim, then maybe you'll have to say like when a lot of trees are felled, then the soil will become loose. So if the soil is loose, then the heavy rainfall will easily wash away the soil causing a lot of landslides. So that's cause and effect. It's, it's a very simple and brief example for you here. 
Now, the third element is usually written in third person point of view and you're supposed to avoid pronouns such as I, we, us, our. Now, let me give you a very brief explanation here. So the moment you use the word personal pronoun such as I, and then if you say like, I think, I feel, then it becomes your opinion. It becomes personal opinion. And this type of personal opinions um, cannot be considered valid until and unless you have an authority over that information, meaning that unless you have done or conducted a research or studies or maybe discovered something. This is the reason why we are supposed to avoid personal pronouns and encourage to use third person point of view like you can very much use pronouns such as he, she, it, they and so on and so forth. So with this we are done with the elements of an expository essay. So moving on, we have further discussion on expository essay. So let's look at this uh, figure, it says body parts. And definitely, it's a figure of a boy. But if you look at his body parts, we get to see that this boy has head, two eyes, two ears, one mouth, so on and so forth. Now, let's have a look at this figure. This figure is definitely not a boy. But this figure also has common body parts. She also has a head, two ears, two eyes, a nose, very similar. But we do know that there are also some features that are dissimilar in them. But despite of those similar and dissimilar body features, we categorize them as humans. So they have some features that are common and some features that are uncommon, but still they are called as humans. Similarly, we have different types of essays. We have expository essay, we have descriptive essay, narrative, persuasive, and others. So now, although all of them are categorized as, you know, like, or referred to as essay, but as we said, expository essay informs, descriptive essay describes. Of course, like, it's not just description alone. It must have a dominant idea and value addition should also be there. What am I trying to say here is I'm asking you to be very careful and very mindful at the same time when you are writing expository essay. Please do not bring in too many features of other essays. So when you are writing an expository essay, please keep in mind the elements that we just discussed of an expository essay and, you know, like incorporate them in your writing. So with this, we are here. This is the main lesson of our day, components of an introductory paragraph. So here I would like to mention that introductory paragraph has its own distinct features and structures that are different from that of a body paragraph. And the body paragraph, in a similar manner, also has its own distinct features and structures. And so does the conclusion or the concluding paragraph. So with this, let's look at the components of an introductory paragraph. Number one, opening sentence. Next, we have you know, general idea, and then specific idea, and then the thesis statement with three main points. So these are the components of an introductory paragraph. So we're going to look at them one at a time. So this is opening sentence. Now what do you see here? It's a magnet. This magnet is symbolic. This magnet is not going to attract metal pieces. So this magnet here attracts People. Now, people here would refer to your readers. And the magnet here is symbolizing opening sentence. It's telling us our opening sentence should attract readers. And how can it attract readers? It can do so by being very catchy, very interesting. Then it can attract lots of readers. So does it sound quite difficult to write? opening sentence. There are techniques and ways to write opening sentence and let us discuss a few of them. So 
The first technique is the use of figurative language. So figurative language here refers to all those sensory details or imageries and also uh, figures of speech such as simile, metaphor, hyperbole, so on and so forth. The other way is the use of facts and figures. So when I say facts and figures here, I'm referring to those facts and figures which are not usual. They should be unusual, extraordinary, outlandish, even shocking. Use figures and facts that are both pleasant and unpleasant to start your um, opening sentence in your introductory paragraph so that you will be able to get the attention of your readers. The other way is questions. So you can also use questions to start your essay uh, provided you have very thought-provoking and critical and questions that really lets the reader think deeply. So if you have this type of questions, then it can be a good start for your uh, essay. And uh, the list is not exhaustive. You can have numerous, there can be many ways to start your uh, opening sentence. Because, uh, you know, like essay writing is creative writing. You can be very creative and let your imagination soar and then bring in more skills and techniques to write opening sentence. So with this, I have some examples here to help you start writing your opening sentence. So the first example is 90% of those afflicted with COVID-19 are children under 10 years and senior citizens. So I'm sure like when you read this information for the first time, you must have become interested to read further. It's an example to show like how you can gain the attention of your reader. So this is example on how you use figure in your opening sentence to make it catchy. Then there's a question here. Is COVID-19 here to remind us of impermanence? And then we have uh, one more here. COVID-19 is ghastly beast that the earth has ever encountered. This is how the writer has used um, figures of speech here to start the opening sentence. After having written down your opening sentence, it's time for you to jot down your general idea. And once you jot down your general idea, you need to narrow it down. The general idea should be narrowed down. It should help you to arrive at the specific idea. Once you have arrived at the specific idea, you're all ready to write your or develop your thesis statement with three main points. So this is how introductory paragraph are developed. I have an example here to help you understand more. So this example uh, is a sample essay and uh, it's a descriptive essay. And the title of this essay is My Pet. So in this essay, the first sentence says, animals are our link to paradise. So if you look at this first sentence, this first sentence is uh, called as opening sentence. So the author has here tried to make it interesting or catchy uh, by using figures of speech, in particular hyperbole, because this exaggeration here, it says animals are our link to paradise. Then the next sentence is, people kept animals in the olden days mainly to help them with their daily lives. In many villages of Bhutan, domestic animals are still very important. They give them milk, cheese, butter, fertilizer, etc. So after opening sentence, those three sentences that we looked at contains general idea and the narrowing down of idea. Because the very next sentence, people kept animals. So people here would refer to people across the world. Then as you go on to the third sentence, it is no longer talking about um, people of the world. It's talking about Bhutanese. Some kind of narrowing down of idea has occurred here. In many villages of Bhutan, domestic animals are still uh, very important. So they give, now that's a, just an explanation or elaboration on the point that is mentioned in sentence number three. You see this very special word there, however. So words such as however and but helps the writer to insert or incorporate opposite idea. So you see the word however and then after that animals are also kept by families as pet just to love them. So what's happening here now? After writing the word however, you come across an idea 
which is different from what was mentioned earlier by other sentences. Because see here, until then, the writer was talking about how animals benefited people. But after writing the word, however, she goes on and says, people also keep animals, not just because animals benefit them as pet. And what are pets? Do we benefit from pets? Not always, I guess. We keep pet just to love them. That's for unconditional love. So that's the point the writer is making here. And then after, you know, like writing that point, she goes on and says, I also have a pet named Puppy. So that is the specific idea. Because then we come to know that this essay is going to be on the author's dog named Puppy and not somebody's Katu or, you know, like Singe or Tommy, no. So this essay is going to focus on the author's dog called Puppy. It's a beautiful dog and I love it very much. It's one of my best friends as it loves me, plays with me and understands me. After having arrived at a specific idea, author has then built or developed her thesis statement. And thesis statement is that very last line uh, with three main points. This paragraph has all the components of an introductory paragraph. Okay, so we have another example here. This sample essay is on expository essay and the title of the essay is Forest Fire. I'll give you a few minutes to go through this essay and then try and identify the components of an introductory paragraph. Your time starts now. Right, your time is up. So I hope you have been able to identify, if not all, at least some features of uh, an introductory paragraph in this uh, sample essay. So if you look at this, the very first sentence is an example of a complex sentence because it has two clauses, one dependent clause and another independent clause. So if you look at the first part, it starts, although Bhutan wears the crown of biodiversity. So, can we call this an opening sentence? I'm sure we can do that because you see, Bhutan is being given life. She's wearing the crown of biodiversity. The meaning that you get from this clause is, Bhutan is very rich in natural resources. So that's the meaning that we get from here. She's very healthy, she's very robust, she has very rich natural resources. So let's look at the second uh, clause. It says like, it is however affected by natural disasters such as earthquake, forest fire, landslide, flood, etc. The word however, once again, is helping the writer to insert contradictory idea from whatever she has claimed or mentioned earlier. In the first part of the sentence, Bhutan is projected as the queen of natural resources. She's very rich in natural resources. But then the writer says, however, Bhutan still gets affected by natural disasters. So that's the claim being made here. And then the list of natural disasters have been mentioned there. Then you go on to the next sentence and then it says, amongst these natural disasters, dangerous natural disasters, forest fire has proved to be one of the most destructive disasters. So what can we say about this point number two? So when you look at sentence number two, I'm sure you must have identified narrowing down of idea and specific idea in the sentence number two. Because you see like amongst these dangerous natural disasters, so narrowing down has already occurred. Forest fire, that's a specific idea, has proved to be one of the most destructive disasters. So the writer has already reached the specific idea here. And 